Welcome to our digital discussion, everyone. My name is John Harry. I'm the Programs and Marketing Fellow for the Milwaukee County Historical Society. And so happy you are with us tonight uh, as we are going to talk with uh, Steve Schaffer, our Assistant Archivist, and his presentation, A City of Three Rivers. It's all part of our Milwaukee Where the Waters Meet exhibit programming. Uh, the exhibit is open uh, right now. No, not right now, right now. Um, depends on when you watch this, I suppose. During normal business hours is when we are normally open. Um, so if you go to milwaukeehistory.net, you can find all that stuff out. But uh, the exhibit is up uh, right now uh, through uh, May, I believe. Um, so make sure that you see it while you can. Uh, we do have another uh, talk that kind of extends off of this talk uh, coming up next week called the Milwaukee River Basin Legacy and Restoration. Uh, that's in partnership with the Milwaukee Riverkeeper. Uh, so we'll get uh, an intro into the history of uh, the rivers that make up Milwaukee's waterways tonight with Steve. Um, and next week, we're going to dive a little deeper into uh, some of the more environmental history um, and some of the issues surrounding that and uh, the restoration of, of uh, the Milwaukee River Basin in Milwaukee. So think of this as kind of a primer uh, for next week. And so that's the same place, same time next week. Hope you can make it to that one, too. But we have the man of the hour, the guy who's given more of these talks th than anybody uh, ever. Uh, so, uh, since we've got this going, um, which it's, it's kind of hard to believe it's been almost a year, uh, since we did started doing these things. Um, but, uh, Steve Schaffer, welcome to the program. Thanks, John. Uh, and, uh, uh, Steve will, uh, be happy to answer any questions he can afterwards. So just put, throw those in the comments, wherever you're watching, uh, and we'll get to those at the end, but I'm going to get out of the way, uh, and let you, uh, look at, uh, Steve, uh, a very young picture of Steve. Uh, we'll get her going here. Uh, Steve, a city of three rivers, our assistant archivist, take her away. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm Steve Schaffer, assistant archivist at MCHS, and thought I'd start off kind of in the river spirit. This is a bullhead I caught at Clutch Park, summer of 1969, whopping eight years old. Learned two important things that day. Uh, bullheads have these really sharp bones on the side of their head, and you have to be careful when you take the hook out. And fishing isn't always about what you catch. A lot of times it's just about getting out of the house for a while. Thanks, Dad, for that one. So moving along, uh, Milwaukee, the city of three rivers, the waterborne development of the city on the lake. A little background, the history of glaciers in the area um, left us with uh, valley that was carved by a runoff and uh, during the melting period. And the, and the rivers uh, still run, running into Lake Michigan, pass through uh, woodlands, uh, prairies, towns, cities. Um, and that's kind of, uh, 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 you know, a bit of a start for it. Uh, we have a lot of ancient uh, formations in Milwaukee uh, along the lakeshore. Uh, sea creatures um, came up, you know, the Gulf of Mexico came up almost to Chicago, north of Chicago. And uh, rocks on both sides of I-94 near the ballpark are ancient uh, cerulean uh, uh, reef uh, containing fossil creatures from about six million years ago. Okay, enough of the science. Uh, what are we talking about? We're talking about three rivers. Uh, the Kinnikinnik or the Kinnikinnik or the KK is the largest uh, and open to navigate, is the narrowest, I'm sorry, and open to navigation in stages and is often referred to as the, the Forgotten River. Uh, the Milwaukee River comes from the north and passes through the business district of the city. And the Menominee River comes from the northwest and passes through suburbs before crossing the Industrial Valley and merging with the Milwaukee River. So the, the, the confluence of the two rivers and, and really what it was basically uh, Kinnikinnik Creek um, created an, an estuary of abundance. Um, uh, this, this area was marked by a lot of marsh area. Uh, there was abundant waterfowl, uh, animals like beavers, um, a lot of, uh, of uh, waterfowl, fish, um, and just a, a, a lot of 
a really beautiful natural um, environment. Um, and uh, the flora was uh, a lot of wild rice, lo long reeds. In fact, uh, the word Menominee means wild rice. Um, both, it, speaking of the valley, um, this map doesn't really do it justice, but both sides um, of the of the Menominee uh, Valley were um, covered with uh, rich uh, flora, uh, basswood, maple forests, just um, just a, a really wonderful um, uh, natural area. Um, the Potomo uh, the Potawatomi uh, was the valley of the, of the site of the first uh, native settlements. Uh, but really the defining feature of, of the valley was the marshland uh, that extended all the way to what would be um, 43rd Street um, from the area just uh, west of the lake. So um, everything changed dramatically for the natural habitat of the river um, in 1857. Uh, there had been discussion of uh, what was called a straight cut um, going back to 1832. But finally, um, in 1857, this actually happened. And we can kind of see right there my cursor. That's the, the, the area of the straight cut. And what you see is um, the, the entrance to Milwaukee used to be a very roundabout way around here and then up. And at the time of the settlements, when uh, the Milwaukee was basically three different communities, uh, Juneau Town, which would be east of the Milwaukee River, Kilbourne Town, west of the Milwaukee River, and Walker's Point, south. Uh, Byron Kilbourne had a monopoly on the ferry boats that would go up the river and they would drop um, uh, uh, migrants and, and uh, prospective uh, citizens on his side of the river. So uh, Juno was at a bit of a disadvantage in that his, his, his prospective citizens had to um, uh, disembark on, on, on the lake, which was often uh, a very dangerous and, and certainly a much more um, involved process than going up the river. Um, but in 1857, that really changed. Um, this, this, um, this cut actually made Jones Island an island. A lot of this area was filled in and became a peninsula, but the straight cut and then the army engineering uh, dredging of the river made um, the Milwaukee River and especially the Menominee uh, River uh, what was known as the Inner Harbor. And it was a place for ships to um, safely moor and, and um, unload their, their cargo. And the, the straight cut really is what uh, kicked off Milwaukee's um, rise. Uh, it was a, you know, a fantastic port city. And this is at a time when the Great Lakes were a very important navigational um, route. I mean, it, trains hadn't been fully developed yet um, in the train systems. And so a lot of, a lot of travel and, and um, you know, and supplies and things like that were, were brought on the, on the lake. Um, this is a shot. So we'll start with the Milwaukee River. This is a shot of uh, the Chicago and Northwestern Swing Bridge. And this would have probably been around uh, 1870. Uh, you'll want to notice the huge amount of cut wood used both as fuel um, and then, of course, uh, building material. Um, Milwaukee means where the waters meet, although there is some um, <clears throat> debate on, on that. Uh, there are other uh, <clears throat> meetings, uh, council ground, things, uh, aro uh, pleasant aroma, uh, different names like that. But basically, um, everybody seems to agree on where the waters meet. Um, and the river is uh, 104 miles uh, long and starts in Fond du Lac uh, County. Uh, in Milwaukee, it passes uh, under over 30 bridges, including several railroad bridges. Uh, there are dams at Brown Deer and North Avenue and one at Estabrook. 
which has been um, uh, removed recently uh, for best water flow and ecology. And, and also the North Avenue Dam has been removed. Uh, the Milwaukee River has been used for recreation, uh, swimming schools, skating, canoeing, and but especially for industry, it, it, it was used for uh, ice harvesting, manufacturing, um, and, and it was a really an industrial arterial um, uh, for commerce, especially transportation. My dog just spilled my water, so that was what I was looking at. Um, so here's an example of the recreation uh, that would have been available on, on the Milwaukee River. There were a, a, a group of um, swimming schools, and they were just north of the North Avenue Dam. Uh, this was the, the area of the river that really was the cleanest. Uh, this is an old postcard of Bextein Swimming School. There was uh, across the river, there was Whitaker's, um, and next to Bextein was um, Roan's. And those were the areas where people learned uh, to swim um, probably up until about the 1930s. And then these schools began to um, go out of uh, use. Uh, here's another wonderful shot. This is uh, uh, a uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Harry W. Stanfield uh, photo. Uh, we're looking um, from the area, I think probably by the Locust Street Bridge, uh, we're looking uh, southeast uh, across the river is Riverside Park. We're not very far from um, the, the high school, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, this is uh, people, uh, they're setting up for um, winter activities. So in, in Gordon Park, there was a very large uh, ski uh, hill, um, one of those uh, ski jumps, and there would be uh, skating races, there would be hockey, and then just general skating. So this is another way that Milwaukeeans um, enjoyed uh, the river. Um, this is a shot that's farther up uh, the the river. That that in the background, that's the um, capital or might have been called Lake uh, at that time, Bridge. So this is the area uh, around Estabrook Park, but again, uh, some canoeing, just uh, north, north of the dam was an area for a lot of recreation. And then there were areas um, that had parks, Kern Park, um, Wonderland, of course, and in Shorewood. So it was, a, it was an area for uh, recreation, especially early in the, in the late, 18th and um, uh, sorry, <laughs> late 19th and early 20th century. Um, so, and 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 here's a, a good example of you know, in this case maybe not recreation as much as um, uh, commerce, but you, you know, fishing in the river was something that was done, and that's a good view of the North Avenue Dam, which is uh, no longer there. That was taken down in um, 1997, and because again, it was a it was deemed as a, a better ecological um, alternative and, 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 and definitely an improvement on the Milwaukee River. Um, early industry. Uh, so this is a uh, what, what what we're looking at is a is a ship. Those uh, um, it, it's loaded with hides because one of the early industries in Milwaukee was the leather industry. You had um, the uh, stockyards. So there was a ready uh, uh, amount of um, furs. And then there was, there was, there were also um, fur trade and, and uh, things like that. So you had, you had hides from the stockyard, you had furs, and all of this was uh, going to Milwaukee's uh, burgeoning um, leather industry. Um, <clears throat> and, and this, this uh, shot is on the Milwaukee river. Um, I think we're just uh, east of the Edison, no, the um, I'm sorry, the Chicago Street Bridge. It's a swing bridge, and this is going upriver. Um, a lot of the leather uh, places, uh, the factories and processing plants like Trastle and Galoon, were all um, farther north up the Milwaukee River. Uh, so, let's, and, and another uh, very uh, important early industry was the um, 
the grain industry. So this is a, an interior shot of the um, Milwaukee Grain Exchange. And uh, you can see uh, grain brokers and merchants, most of them in hats, uh, looking at bowls of grain and before deciding to invest uh, in it. Uh, in the foreground, you see this gentleman with a hat that's a page who would run out with um, information for prospective um, buyers and things like that. So the, the grain industry really uh, revolutionized Milwaukee as a port. You had a, a, a hinterland that had a lot of uh, grain. You had the ability to get the grain to uh, to the city. And then from Milwaukee's port, it could be shipped um, nationally and, and, and internationally. So it was a very big deal. In fact, most of the um, early uh, buildings, like in, for example, in the Menominee Valley uh, were, were mills um, and, and grain storage facilities. Um, this is another industry that we don't often think of, but um, prior to refrigeration or, or certainly, um, you know, uh, consumer um, available uh, refrigeration, um, ice was taken from uh, the river. And, and again, north of the uh, North Avenue Dam was uh, uh, an area that uh, was, was very, uh, uh, loop, uh, you know, uh, uh, there was uh, the ability to have an abundant ice harvest in that area. And, and this is an example of the, um, the workers cutting the ice. Um, they would also have horses that would help um, pull large uh, blades that would cut, and then the um, the ice was stored in that building in the background would be a type of insulated building where it would be stored um, until it'd be uh, ready to be used. Um, so the city uh, still had stables downtown and, and piled on the dock um, is cordwood for furnaces. Uh, you know, nowadays the only masts that we see would be um, recreational sailing craft and on the lakefront, the Dennis Sullivan. But again, this is a, again, you can see the, the, the large amounts of wood, uh, you know, wood, coal, um, all those types of products were, um, you know, the types of things that uh, were um, flying on the river. So this is a rather stylized view of the um, uh, Milwaukee River. And I think the artist, um, who was uh, a gentleman called A.P. Wad, W-A-U-D, uh, Wad. W -A -U -D, um, he was a well-known Civil War artist uh, and worked for the Harper's Magazine. And then after the war, went west and did a series of sketches. And this is one of them of Milwaukee. And I believe, you know, it's, it's, it's highly stylized, so it's hard to say exactly where it is. And, I mean, you know, the perspective is kind of off. We see a tugboat, but then we see the the skull racers and they seem to be awfully tiny compared to everything else. I mean, I think, I think the skull racers are there to um, represent the idea that this was also a recreational river, but quite frankly, at this time, I don't think they would have been down uh, past the North Avenue dam. But again, you can see, um, um, you know, the, the type of commerce that would go on uh, there's, you know, barrels full of um, uh, materials and, uh, you know, it would look like um, immigrants or travelers um, on the side, which, you know, is another important point uh, that, you know, a lot of transportation uh, uh, was was also done over the over the Great Lakes. Um, there were some ocean going schooners uh, at the time. They were larger than the downtown buildings, um, but uh, they would probably seem uh, very small compared to our modern buildings. Um, this is kind of a, well, this is a really good example. And I just love the clarity and the, the action in this, in this photograph. So on the left, we see the um, whaleback uh, freighter, uh, the Christopher Columbus. And this was a, a, a two, two decked uh, passenger uh, whaleback. The only one um, on the Great Lakes, the rest of the whalebacks were uh, primarily uh freight uh, uh, freighters. So this is the Goodrich uh, Boats uh, dock. Um, 
and you can see the passengers getting on. You can clearly see it's going to Chicago. This service began um, in 1893 for the Chicago uh, Columbian Exhibition and uh, was very popular throughout uh, the, you know, the very end of the 19th and uh, the 20th century, right up until the 19 mid 1920s, I believe is when it stopped running the Columbus. But this would have been on um, I, on, on Clybourne, and we're looking uh, we're looking south. Uh, there was a, a large Goodrich dock on that side of the river. You know, obviously now the freeway kind of goes through that. And this this uh, Goodrich boats dock was uh, torn down sometime in the um, later 30s. But, um, tr you know, uh, passenger ships uh, were very important on the Great Lakes, um, probably a cheaper alternative to rail. Um, and uh, certainly in this case, a little bit more convenient if you didn't mind um, being on the lake. Um, this is a good shot of the um, Milwaukee River, and this really illustrates kind of the the uh, industrial and commercial artery that it became. Uh, this is, of course, uh, at Wisconsin Avenue. It would have been uh, Grand Avenue at this time. It's a the so that is the uh, packet ship um, SS uh, Racine. Uh, it's going. Uh, actually through a bascule bridge, uh, which are the types of bridge that um, open in the center with the sides weighted for balance. This this type of bridge, because of the commerce on the river, replaced the center post swing bridges, which had previously been um, uh, used. And, and uh, like in the first slide of the Chicago and Northwestern uh, railroad bridge. They, they were cumbersome to get through. The bascule bridge opened up a lot of um, space uh, to um, to allow ships to, to go through. And that is quite a, a big ship. And it's really uh, a, a really beautiful shot. You can just see City Hall peeking to the right of that bascule. And, and then this is the old uh, Paps building. Um, uh, the, uh, the Wisconsin uh, National Bank hadn't been built yet. Um, that would be later. So this is before uh, 1914, let's say, but after 1905. So, so it's just a really wonderful uh, shot. Um, so this is one of my favorites. Again, just to stress the kind of starkness and industrial look of the river. The next time you're eating at Bel Air Cantina, I want you to think of this picture because here's actually where the restaurant is. This is now probably uh, their their little beer garden. But at the time of this photo, which is probably, I would say maybe 1940, circa 1940, um, this was a city uh, yard. And I can, I'm not really sure what all this refuse is that's dumped over the side. But, you know, it may be um, street dirt. It could be just dirt. But again, it kind of shows uh, just the the real kind of harshness um, of 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 life and and the environment south of um, the dam. You can just see Saint Hedwig's pointing there at the far left. Um, so, and and another shot um, of the same area. So here's the um, the uh, Humboldt Street Bridge. Uh, this is the area. This was known kind of as the beer line. You can see the Holton. This is Humboldt. You can see Holton in the background. This is a Lyle Overweiss uh, shot from uh, 1936. But again, it's it's uh, just heavily industrialized. Um, and you know, we we often think now the the beer beer line neighborhood, and and that's because there's condos and and newer housing there. But really, at the time you could say the beer line neighborhood was farther up in river West, but this area certainly uh, wasn't um, a neighborhood at all. in in, in that sense, especially uh, the area that just hugs the river. So, and one more, and then this is another shot of the, the dam below North Avenue. Um, this is another Lyle Overweiss or shot from 1937. Um, and, and again, this illustrates uh <laughs> At the at the bridge, kind of the the change because you can still see one of the old uh, swimming schools is still available. But in the background, you know, this is North Avenue here. This is a road going down. Uh, there were cement works here. 
And then a lot of this is the railroad lines. You can see the cars right there. So that's the old, the old beer line. So this is just a, a really wonderful shot of how the river used to be. Um, and then a, another rather large uh, operation um, on the Milwaukee River was the uh, construction um, of dams and uh, other uh, relief uh, dams uh, during the 1930s. It was done by the uh, CCC. Uh, Milwaukee County really, um, uh, well, the, the uh, county supervisors were wise to take advantage of the um, uh, the opportunity of, of the WPA and the Con Civilian Conservation Corps. And a lot of our park work in the, in the city was accomplished by these crews. Uh, this, this, this group here is uh, 1699. Um, uh, that was the company. And they did all the work in the Estabrook Park area, but there was work that was done. <laughs> That's Gus the Archive Dog. Um, there was work that was done um, in, in uh, Whitnow Park extensively, in Cudahy, Honey Creek Parkway, just a lot of work done. And, and this map, uh, this shows one aspect of the work that they were doing in the river. There was also work done farther up, uh, closer to the, uh, um, the Capitol um, Street, Capitol Drive Bridge. But this is very interesting because it shows where their camp was set up. And the picture on the right is actually the barracks um, themselves. There are still, well, there was one of these at Whitnell Park. My understanding is that it's no longer there, but these used to um, be all over the, the county where they were. And then they were often used um, later for um, housing um, aliens during World War II who were either um, well, more than likely um, enemy aliens. Um, and then th they were also used after the war as temporary housing for a lot of the servicemen uh, coming back. Just a little side note on there, getting away from the river. So here's another shot of the Milwaukee River. And, and this one I kind of like because it's we have a, a then and now. So this is circa 1935. It's, you know, the Riverside Theater, the RKO uh, company owned it. And... Now, this is from one of our historic river tours that we do with Milwaukee Kayak Company. Uh, this is the new facade on the um, uh, Riverside Theater. That's the Empire Building, but the Riverside Theater is what people most know, know it for. And uh, this was an installation put in in 1998 um, uh, by uh, Cork uh, Marcheshi, and it's uh, really a beautiful uh, piece. So moving on to the Menominee River, and uh, as we know, the Menominee means wild rice. Uh, the Menominee is 10 miles long and uh, starts in the Freistadt area, uh, but it first shows up on the surface in, in Grafton. It goes through Menominee Falls, Dretzka Park, uh, Butler, Tosa, goes by Miller Park, and, and then into the Menominee Valley and the third war where it uh, merges at, at, with, the, um, with the Milwaukee River. Um, west of the, the harbor, um, the, there, there are canals and, and the, the, the Menominee takes on more of a, um, well, more of a canal um, a manifestation than, than it does in this picture. And this picture is, um, I think, around what was the Pigsville area. You can see it kind of meanders. You can see that that's like the Johnson cookie factory in the background. So we're looking south. Uh, this is the bluff that was then, that would then drop into the industrial uh, valley. So this is quite an interesting um, shot. Uh, here's a good view. Um, you can see the, the winding part of the, of the Menominee uh river but uh right right here at about um uh 27th and i think this is 27th street it it becomes very um much of a of a of a canal and a thoroughfare so you can see this is, oops sorry about that let me go back oops all right um so this is um you can see the the canal uh development um uh just a, a lot of inlets 
mainly for boats. The area in between those would be more than likely covered with large um, piles of coal. But you can see um, that's over here is where the Milwaukee and the Menominee, that's the confluence. There's the engine uh, company number 15, which was a fireboat uh, company uh, right there. But uh, this really dramatically shows the the real um, changes to the uh, to the, uh, the the valley and um, Gus um, after uh, the the straight cut um, uh, the 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 Menominee was um, dredged for uh, shipping it uh, it became an area for grain elevators um, and at post Civil War, there was a, a very large amount of development that went on, um, uh, you know, and and a lot of it was was filled too because you have to remember it was a very large marsh area which extended all the way to what is now Forty Third, and that was filled with cinder, slug, coal ash, uh, foundry materials, any kind of construction debris. So what was at one time a, a wonderful wetland became. Um, uh, uh, more of, of landfill and then um, development. Uh, uh, you know, Fister Vogel went in, uh, meat packing uh, went in, the Milwaukee Road set up its large uh, machine shop um, on, on the west end of the, the valley. Um, but it was, uh, it was, you know, it was really radically changed of all the of all the rivers, um, I think, especially as it approaches Milwaukee, this one is um, the one that looks the least like it used to, shall we say. Um, this is a shot of um, just, again, you can see the piles of what look like uh, coal. Um, this is looking, uh, I, I know this is the um, best, um, the old best uh, Southside brewery. So, you know, we're definitely in the, um, in the KK area, but uh, again, the old uh, uh, schooners and uh, just um, just an amazing shot of the early um, development of the uh, industrial development of the um, Menominee uh, River. Uh, this is Fister and Vogel Tannery on Virginia Street uh, with boats tied up, um, all kinds of things, shoes, straps, belts, saddles, cart carriage seats, all kinds of things uh, were, were um manufactured here. That's just an amazing pile of um, pelts or hides on the, on the side there. Uh, just really, again, accentuates the, the industrial uh, might of the valley. Um, this is a shot from another one from Lyle Oberweiss. And this, this one kind of gives you the sort of stark industrial <laughs> landscape. I mean, I think it's a rather beautiful photograph, but again, I mean, it's it's huge piles of coal and it's almost as if you can see steam coming off of them. And then the large um, uh, coal bridges that moved back and forth on rails and would pick up loads of coal. And this is at a time when, when you know, Milwaukee furnaces and were heating with coal, coal was king. And uh, this, this is really uh, quite well, um, uh, represented in this photograph. Little side story, Milwaukee Northern Fuel. My uncle Ed worked for them and made it into the newspapers because he fell down a coal chute. It evidently stuck. They, would, they were jumping on it and old Uncle Ed went right down. Um, he never heard the end of that one. Um, so again, this is another shot. And this is a little later. That Lyle Oberweiss, I think, was from 19... 37, late 30s, let's say. And this is Thea Neusinger. Um, these are shots of the valley in 1956. So you can still see, um, you know, the <laughs> pretty much nothing had changed in that period of time. And, and again, this is a good shot of the, the large rails that went along the side. So, um, you know, those are all gone, but just the, the sheer machinery that, that was down there um, is, is amazing. You can see the Milwaukee Gas uh, Light Company back there. And those are the, the large um, towers and, and through that ran uh, the interurban. So really just 
wonderful shots. This is another Lyle Oberweiss. This is after World War II. And again, we're looking. Um, so 27th is about here. You can see that the, the freeway hasn't been built yet. There's stairs that go down, bridges that go across this, you know, and this, this very large uh, cliff that used to be there, uh, you know, remnant of the old bluffs. And again, we're looking at the, the gaslight works um, and just uh, the um, uh, Milwaukee Road uh, uh, railroad uh, 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 area. And it's, uh, it's, it's quite an impressive uh, photograph of the marshalling yard. Uh, this one is a Ray Chopre uh, photo, and again, uh, kind of kind of stark. Now, this was a this was a, a dredge, which would uh, have to periodically go and scoop um, out the bottom of the of the uh, canals because, of course, ships had to to navigate. But I, I'm just I'm just amazed at in these photographs at the amount of coal just on the dock, and you know the the huge amount of runoff that must have been involved um, with those with those piles. Uh, this is a good aerial view. Um, so we have Sixth uh, Street here, uh, um, and then Sixteenth, uh, Twenty Seventh. There's the Muskego Street Bridge, and just a really good shot of the different canals that were offshoots um, of the of the of the main. Um, Canal, which is right here. Um, again, no freeway yet. Um, you can see the bluffs. Um, it's a, it's a really impressive shot of that industrial area. And moving to the KK. So, um, Kinnikinnik means a pinch of herbs or tobacco. It is 9.6 miles long. Um, starts at the airport in Cudahy, uh, with a branch starting just north of Oklahoma at 74th Street. And they join at 35th in Manitoba and go east, uh, just north of Cleveland, towards the harbor. Um, it is uh, fairly; it has been fairly polluted in its past. Uh, flash floods after heavy rains are, are dangerous, and it is uh, it has been narrowed by sloping concrete walls that have been built. This is a shot, however, of the KK. Um, we're looking from Jones Island. Um, you can see the twin uh, steeples of St. Stan's right there. And just, I think that might, I'm not sure if that's a water tower, but um, the, a smaller um, Alan Bradley would be peeking around around here. And there's a large uh, uh, Pierre Marquette line um, uh, passenger freighter uh, moored. Um, so rail bridges over the Menominee and the Kinnikinnick carried uh, fuel uh, and passenger cars in and out of the city. Um, at Walker's Point, there are several rail lines crossing the canals and roads. Um, so it, it's uh, it, it, it's a, a, a pretty this this part of the the river of the the KK is the is the widest, and it's still really part of what I would call an active uh, the, the active harbor. It's still uh, pretty much of an industrial area and, and certainly uh, of a freight area. Uh, this is a shot um, earlier in, 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 in the um, 19th century. Um, this is a, a schooner by a lumber yard and, and lumber was, was critical. It was used for housing, for building ships, uh, plank roads, wagons, docks, and, um, you know, even even things like tamarack trees were used for water pipes and pilings under buildings. In fact, that's the pilings that are under the Milwaukee County Historical Society are tamarack uh, piles, pilings. Um, so this really gives you an idea of, of the amount of uh, maritime activity in the city, thanks to these three rivers, which which um, created this safer inner harbor uh, to more. Um, this is a Jones Island photograph uh, from the later later 30s, I believe. I think the last residents on Jones Island were 
Um, the last resident left in 1943. So this might be a little bit before, but this is really just a shadow of what um, the island uh, used to look like with its very active uh, Kashub uh, fishing um, village. Um, but, you know, again, you can see in the background, there's the large storage tank. So um, the Jones Island was becoming more of a, of a rail uh, marshalling area. Uh, there was a large um, steel uh, uh, foundry on one end and then the um, uh, sewer uh, uh, filter uh, filtration and um, uh, uh, the Jones Island um, complex that was the uh, uh, the area that that or the factory that produced the malorganite. Um, here we have a shot of the municipal uh, port, and this was technically part of the Kinnikinnick River. You can see where the river comes through here. There's the swing bridge, and then it, it opens up. The municipal harbor was used in the, um, uh, you know, right up until about uh, 1965, maybe 1970, once, once ice breaking, uh, ice breaker ship technology became better. Um, freighters could ply uh, the the waters of, of Lake Michigan, but more than likely they would be um, moored here from, let's say November to um, March. Um, if their crews, if members of the crew lived in Milwaukee, that that's where they you know, would be spending their time. But this kind of gives you a good shot too of how um, Jones Island became more of a rail area and um, fuel storage, tar storage uh, facility. Um, and again, the, the Kashu village was, was long gone by this time. Um, this is another shot. Um, next time you're at Barnacle Buds, um, think about this view. Um, here's the swing bridge, of course. Uh, this would have been uh, Milwaukee uh, Salve uh, Coke and, and Coke Company. This was a very large uh, processing plant. Again, you can see the um, twin towers of uh, St. Sebastian's. And of course, I'm sorry, um, not St. Sebastian's, St. Stanislaus. And, and of course, the... Um, uh, Allen Bradley complex, and it looks like they're building uh, the larger tower. So this is sometime around um, the early 60s, maybe the late 50s. But imagine you're sipping your cocktail at, at Barnacle Buds, and you know you'd see a large freighter uh, right moored right to the side. So all of this area um, is is um, you know being redeveloped. Um, it's it's um, it doesn't look anything like that anymore. But it 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 really again just shows how how heavily industrialized uh, the lakefront was and the areas around uh, the rivers. And and then this is another shot. And, and both these are photographs. The previous one and this one uh, were done by a, a gentleman named George uh, Kashalik, a very famous uh, journal photographer, and he did these. So now we're looking um, toward the um, sewerage processing plant and, you know, through the swing bridge. Again, huge uh, ships here lining up next to the Coke Salve um, uh, works. Just a, a really an amazing shot. And this is kind of a before and after uh, one I was able to find with photographs that we had in our collection. So this is a swing bridge over the KK River, 1936 Lyle Oberweiss. And here we have a later view in 2009. And, and with the exception of the large uh, concrete works, everything else is, is you know, pretty much looks um, the same. It's kind of a, it's, it's great when you can do this with photographs um, in the collection. So the future of the rivers, I don't want to get into this too much since it'll be next week's talk, next week's talk. But, um, you know, it, it, the, I think the important thing to, to take away from this is that um, we, you know, the river started off as beautiful natural areas. They became very industrialized, but we are working our way back toward really um, beautiful and sustainable rivers, even in the Menominee 
Valley, which has, of course, seen um, great strides um, recently, and the Milwaukee River. So this is just a quick shot. I, it's a little cut off, but that's Gertie the Duck. It wouldn't be a river talk of any kind if uh, Gertie wasn't included. Um, <clears throat> one of the early projects that was uh, thought of to help um, clean the river because by 1870, 1880, it had become very apparent to Milwaukee residents that the river was a horrible, uh, festering, um, slow moving um, uh, cesspool, actually. So what was decided, um, an engineer named um, Edmund Reynolds uh, came up with this idea of a uh, engine um, with, with a very large intake motor that would then pump water from Lake Michigan into the Milwaukee River, thus flushing it out. Um, so this is Kane Street. So here's the dam. And right before the, you know, right in front of the dam, that would get the, the water moving. Um, it was a great idea. It was really, for the time, just a, an, an unbelievable undertaking. In fact, no one thought that uh, it would be possible, um, but uh, it it um, it ended up just really polluting the lake more, which was what Milwaukee relied on for its drinking water. So, um, although it was a you know a, a, a just an engineering feat, it really wasn't uh, the complete answer. What the complete answer was was, of course, um, a better sewer system, and then um, a water filtration and uh, sewage processing, which eventually came. But this was a, an early attempt, let's say, to, to uh, clean the river. Um, this is an example of something that I came across that I was really pleased with. It's, 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 it's sort of the beginning of the idea of using the river as a space. Um, there, there was some thought in the 19 teens and 20s uh, of turning the river into more of a pedestrian thoroughfare, getting rid of the overhead, uh, the, the, the bridges, and, and just having pleasant uh, uh, pedestrian bridges that were all uniform in size. The, the river would be narrowed and there'd be broad areas to walk on either side. A very European uh, conception, if any of you have ever been to Amsterdam or, or maybe uh, Brussels, you'd, you'd see that, that that type of, of um, thing there, but that really didn't work here. But what this is was um, an attempt, well, and actually uh, they were successful. Uh, Gimbel's uh, petitioned, <laughs> at that time it was the War Department because it was, uh, the U.S. Army engineers were under the War Office, but um, they petitioned to uh, create a foundation and a platform next to Gimbel's brother's store, and this is um, this this is the final phase of the Gimbel's building at the corner, or right before the bridge on on Wisconsin, um, and and they wanted to utilize this area in the front uh, for river, uh, you know, for pedestrians. So in a sense, this is like the 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 seed of what later became the um, Riverwalk. They they you know they, they obviously they didn't conceive of it then as the Riverwalk, but but it was an i it was it was the first idea of uh, using the the river maybe for something else besides just boats and 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 uh, um, transportation. So it's it's interesting. What what's also interesting is that uh, they really had to go to the mat with. Uh, the city of Milwaukee on this. Dan Hone was not real happy about it. Um, and Milwaukee, although it, it it continued to renew this and extend the use of this, it, it always made sure that they, Gimbel's knew that, you know, Milwaukee had the final say on this. But actually the Gimbel's people kind of won out because it was a, it was a, it was a good idea. And it later um, developed into a more uh, widespread conception of, of the river as more of a, uh, a an area for entertainment and um, recreation. So this is a shot of the area in front of the PAC. We're looking Northwest. This building is no longer here. That's the Metropolitan Block, but Usinger's is there and there's 
Donges uh, on the corner of Third and State. That's the State Street Bridge. So this is the old, ugly um, river wall being torn down um, in in preparation. This is '68, so in preparation and in uh, uh, cooperation with the building of the the PAC, which along with the uh, Milwaukee County Historical Society, the PAC, and the area around uh, Gimbel's, uh, as well as Schlitz Park uh, a little later, was sort of the, the kernel of, the, of what we now know as the, the River Walk. Um, but the concern about the river was, was beginning to really uh, peak. Uh, once the industrialization uh, kind of dropped off in Milwaukee and there were fewer ships going up the river, uh, we began to realize that we had, you know, just very, a very dirty river and it was no longer really uh, serving the purpose that it had. So this is a shot. Uh, the Citizens for a Better Environment uh, took a lot of uh, river tours at the time and took a lot of photographs. And this is one that uh, was, uh, you know, particularly um, kind of captures the, the 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 time and the the amount of pollution and almost film on the water this is uh i believe the saint paul street uh bridge but you know their work and a lot of other uh work that went into um turning the river around uh resulted in the um milwaukee river uh district uh that that date on there is uh incorrect that should be 1992 my bad uh but this was the um the mission statement of the Milwaukee River District, and then their their boundary map, and um, this this conception is what really uh, turned the the Milwaukee River and the downtown area around it um, uh, around in a good way. Uh, and I'm sure we'll go into more of that next week as well. But um, just you know, kind of to show the fruition of those efforts, this is the Germania Building in in um, uh, this summer. Um, and this is, uh, just one of the many beautiful areas of the river walk. You can see the extensions, uh, the, 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 the lattice work, um, and, and the stairways. And this, you know, goes all the way from, um, the Schlitz park area down to, um, right up to, uh, Erie street right before Summerfest. So, um, you know, what started off as a smaller area eventually encompassed the whole river. Um, here's another shot. And this is from one of our historic tours uh, with Milwaukee Kayak Company in in, uh, uh, in 2020. This was this summer. So there's the mayor building. And, uh, you know, you can see, again, the, the uh, river walk area here. Um, kayakers. Um, it's, it's really beautiful to be on, on, on the river in the summertime. So, you know, the same thing happened with the uh, Menominee uh, Valley. So this is uh, the Henry Aaron Trail. This is one of the bridges. Uh, the Menominee Valley is another um, example of just a, 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 an amazing turnaround in, in, a, in, a, in what was left as a bleak um, industrial uh, wasteland has really uh, turned into a wonderful recreational area. This photograph is from our George Potasek collection. He was involved with a lot of the uh, public Milwaukee County uh, park work on bridges and had a real interest in them. Um, this is the Milwaukee Gas and Light, which I now think is city, uh, it's one of the breweries, I'm, I don't wanna screw up the name, but um, it's, it's, this is a, again from our tour, it's really a, a beautiful uh, river to, um, to tour on and uh again it's uh, just a a great time this is the, the 19 or the 2020 menominee uh river historic um tour we did with milwaukee kayak company so the next time you're at twisted fisherman uh just think back on some of the pictures that we had uh probably back in the day that spot would have been a huge coal pile um, just a, an amazing turnaround. Um, and then early reclamation attempts on the KK. This was something that was produced in uh, the 1920s. And uh, the, at that time, people were concerned that, that the, the KK was becoming, you know, polluted and ugly and dangerous. And there was an effort to make 
all of the, the KK within the city limits um, like this. Um, this is an example of one of the better areas. I think this is sort of around uh, Jackson Park. They weren't specific, but this is uh, South 4th and West Harrison. So you can see, you know, the the um, real uh, stark differences in some of the areas. So that that's what the, the KK uh, group was trying to address even as far back as 1922. Uh, this is um, the 2020 uh, Kinnikinnik uh uh, tour that we did with Milwaukee kayak and, and you can see the, you know, the area around the KK is um, really improving, especially with the uh, water Institute uh, down there. Um, so it's, it's becoming an area that is uh, reclaimed, although it is still again, part of an active um, uh, Harbor area. And with that, um, I thank you. This is a shot of, <laughs> I'd like to think Gertie, but it, this is down at the Milwaukee Kayak Company Landing, and I'm ready to take questions. That is a, a few generations uh, post Gertie now, so Gertie, you know, yes, kept exactly the lineage going there. Uh, thank you, Steve. A wonderful round of applause throughout the virtual sphere uh, for Gus too. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, he was really dogging me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, you, you mentioned so the, the brewery is City Lights Brewing Company. Uh, City Lights, you know, I wanted yeah. to say that, and I. Uh, You're good. We got we had some helpers too, uh, but um, but that that just you know with the kayak tours coming up this summer, and I, and you know maybe things get better with all the COVID stuff. There's like so many breweries along the river that would be quite the, the outing, right? To go. Well, I was just to talking that. to. Uh, I, I was just talking to Beth from uh, Milwaukee Kayak, and we would like to try to hit City Lights because last year we couldn't. Um, and it's a nice halfway point, and, and we're going to definitely try to do that. But And we tried to do the same thing with Lakefront. So yeah. um, there's just so much to do on the river now. So a any, lot. any good questions or yeah. comments? Well, or? So first, we'll start with one from our uh, good buddy, Mark Keen, formerly of North Point Lighthouse. Um, he says, uh -oh. how far... Uh, how far up the Milwaukee River or the other rivers could the larger ships get? How could they navigate? Um, well, in, in, the, in the Milwaukee River, the larger ships could only uh, navigate up to the dam. And usually they ended up no farther than the, I want to say the, the Holton Street Bridge. That was designed to allow large ships and they would, that's where Galoon and some of those other places were. So they would go up that far, but that's it. Um, the, the KK, um, it's very difficult um, to get much past um, the area around, oh gosh, that would be uh, 2nd Street. There's some, there's, uh, you know, uh, there's areas where there were some shipyards, but uh, really the larger ships, I think, would pretty much stop at KK. Um, and then, well, the Menominee, you could, they, the big ships could go all the way to roughly 20 uh, seventh. Sure. Uh, Martha wants to know where in Fond du Lac County does, uh, the river start. I'm assuming she's talking about the Milwaukee river. Do you know exactly where that is? I, I really don't know exactly. Um, and, and I have to give credit now to Juliet Hills who also helped, uh, with this, uh, presentation. Um, and <laughs> unfortunately that was some of her material. I'm not sure exactly where in Fond du Lac County. Okay. Um, Jeremy, uh, is on here saying, do you know if there's any plans to remove the concrete walls from the KK? I don't. Maybe next, that, that Sorry. might be a, a good question to keep in your back pocket for next week when we talk more about the, the future yeah. of things. Right. That's a good point. I mean, so you've, you've lived in Milwaukee all your life. And so you, you've experienced the river at various points in it. Um, you know, what was the purpose of the river, you know, with you, or rivers rather, uh, when you were growing up versus maybe now? Like, how, how have you seen them change so much over time? Well, I mean, the one thing that, especially within Menominee Valley, I mean, I, I remember taking school um, bus trips, and this would have been the 60s or, more, you know, the 70s, the, the freeway was up, but those large those large cranes, those large coal um, derricks were still up 
there were still lots of uh, in industry going down and a lot of large ships um, in in the valley. So you could see that. And I, I well, and I remember being a patient at the Children's Hospital, which used to be on Wisconsin, and on the top floors you could look into the valley. And I remember seeing ships, and there were like ships from Greece and and that. Um, the Milwaukee River um, downtown. All, all I remember about that was the bridges went up a lot. There were there were larger ships that went through. We did fish farther north, like around Newburgh on the Milwaukee River. Uh, I did that with my dad, um, but this is before stocking, and it was really you know it wasn't really very productive uh, fishing. But you know you could the the area north of the dam was was you know, a lot cleaner. Um, and, and, and I mean, you still didn't want to go in it. And that was the big thing when I was a kid, you would never go in the Milwaukee river <laughs> with so swimming that's changed, or anything. That's changed a lot. Though, that's right? changed. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Though I, well, I, you know, kayak on the, on that river and my hope is never to go in it. So <laughs> 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 something wrong, right. <laughs> um, I've, been, I've been to one too many breweries on the trip. Um, so, all right. Well, uh, awesome, Steve. Next week, the conversation about the, the rivers uh, continues in, in a sense, um, as we have uh, the Milwaukee River Basin Legacy and Restoration. Uh, Cheryl Nen from the Milwaukee Riverkeeper is going to uh, be presenting um, with that. Um, so uh, we hope you can join us again next week. That is uh, 7.30 next week uh, right here. Uh, so if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter or whatever, uh, we're here for you. So Steve, awesome job. That was really cool to see all the the, the, the photos. But I love how you pulled a lot of like the, the documents that we have in our collection into there too because that tells – you know, Thanks. another the, the story it, that, that was really interesting. Um, and, and people obviously enjoyed that too. So thank you, Steve. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning in and uh, we hope to see you next week. Cheers. Thanks guys. See you, John. <laughs>